I'm Dr. Stephen Conway. I am a lecturer on the Games and Interactivity degree at Swinburne University of Technology. I published a lot on games, on policy, on aesthetics, on mechanics, um, on motivation, um, phenomenology, design, heuristics. Um, just as you pointed towards very broad, mm. um, I guess, um, my, my main trajectory is to understand why we play and, and what, is, what is beautiful about mm. play would be yeah. my main thing. Um, yes, I have. Uh, so, let me see. I guess, professionally, um, the first main job that people would, would know about... Um, did this come before? Yeah, okay, so probably back in 2011, um, would be working as the uh, design consultant for Patient Zero, IRL Shooter Presents Patient Zero. Interesting, yeah. Um, and, you know, there are a bunch of film and TV guys who founded the company, IRL Shooter, um, and they had no idea around design. And smart guys that they are, they said, not everyone can just do this, and we're, we're not doing this very well. Um, so they asked me to come in, uh, because I was interviewed by The Age, um, a, a Melbourne-based newspaper, um, about pervasive gaming, about these kinds of real-life games, physical games. Um, and I pointed towards theirs as an interesting example of where we're going in this space. They contacted me, asked me to come and consult, and we completely reorganized structure of the project so that it was more like playing a Dungeons and Dragons session where you had oh, a cool. dungeon master yeah. running. They, they basically thought of it when, when I first came in as a kind of roller coaster ride, just a linear movement, uh, just moving through an alley kind of shooting things and, mm. and you know I said well what if the person does this instead, what if they do this, what if their motivation to play isn't about this but about that. And they were kind of like, oh God, we need to consider this. Mm. So I said, well, how about instead of that, instead of it being a roller coaster metaphor, it's a Dungeons and Dragons metaphor where you've got a dungeon your adventurers are exploring, mm. and for that you need a dungeon master running the game. Um, and, and then we, we did a bunch of design that is probably a different interview entirely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, that, that was my first, and mm. then uh, worked on a few other bits, a few educational games, a game called Worlds of Navitas, which was released for teaching. Um, physical education mm. in high schools and currently I am working on a game called Outside that is to teach cognitive skills to young offenders, first time inmates in prison systems. Oh interesting. Mm. So that's one that will hopefully be around September released. Oh so actually this year? This year. Oh wow. Yeah. In collaboration with Robot Circus who are uh, uh, ex Blue Tongue uh, developers in Melbourne CBD. I, uh, video games or games in general? Is games in general or then um, video games as the next Yeah, I suppose my earliest memories would be, my earliest memories of playing games would be playing football as a child, like being three or four, just running around, you know, kicking a ball as big as me around mm. the field, you know, and trying to figure out this whole idea of controlling this, this foreign object, mm. you know, which is always very pleasing for a child. Um, and then, in terms of video games, my earliest memory is probably Mario. Mm. Um, probably the original Super Mario's on Nintendo. Uh, moving Mario around, jumping, hitting, stomping. And the, again, I think the pleasure was the enormous amount of autonomy mm. I was afforded in the game world. You know, as a kid, you're, you're told to do everything and be everywhere by other people. Mm. Um, whilst in a game, you are in control and you're in yeah. charge, and that's enormously appealing. There was, um, so it wasn't taught when I was at school, mm. just games were not taught at all. Um, you know, we had physical education and sports, but we didn't have video games or any kind of games as a pedagogical subject. Mm. Um, I got into it, I did a master's degree back in England um, on culture and communication, um, and I wrote a thesis, which is a long form, um, an essay. Mm. And that was on the auteur theory, which is, auteur is just a French word, which means author. The author <laughs> theory, right? So, so Martin Scorsese is an auteur. 
in other words, you see a film and you know that Martin Scorsese directed it, not because it comes up on the screen, Martin Scorsese, but because he has a certain style, okay, a certain yeah, yeah, yeah. subject matter, certain certain way of framing shots mm. and all of that, a certain way of directing. That's mm. his author kind of fingerprint. Mm. What I did was applied that to games and said, do games because they're so large, mm. but like films, you know, are so large, but we still say films have a director, they have a thumbprint of someone. Mm. Do games have a similar claim in their mechanics, mm. in their content, in their thematics? And I looked at um, the head of Double Fine Studios, uh, Tim, or Tim Schafer. Mm. I looked at Tim Schafer's games, uh, Monkey Island, mm. Grim Fandango, all of those, and identified a few common thematics and, and mechanics going through his whole body of work and said, yes, the auto theory holds up in games. Through that, I was told that was excellent. We'll give you a scholarship if you do a PhD. Did the PhD on sports and video yep. games. Well, what I love about games is, you know, how they change the meaning of the world. Mm. That That's really what they do in their essence. That's what plays. If I hold this pen and if it afforded it, perhaps it does, it looks quite unstable. But if I could balance it, I might now say, if I can get a bunch of other pieces, I could now say, you know, this is the king, this is the queen, we'll get a few other pieces, I call them a pawn, I just draw a few grids, mm. and we've got a game of chess. What I've done is I've changed the meaning of the pen. Mm. The pen becomes king, and that's a magic trick to me, mm. in many ways. You know, when people do this, when you walk around the space, and like a magician, a game designer says, actually now the world means something different. Mm. So the floor is lava, ah, mm. all of a sudden. The parameters have been set, rules have been put right. in place, and now you can approach in a totally different manner. Indeed, yeah. the world is different. So that, that fascinates me. And mm. So what, what I'm interested in is why are we, why do we go along with that? Mm. Why is that so fun? Why is that so fascinating to people? And you know, currently I'm subscribing to a motivational theory, which is that, uh, called self-determination theory, which you guys have probably heard me talk mm -hmm. about, um, which is we need three things, autonomy, competence, relatedness. And games are very good formats for giving us all of those mm -hmm. things. We like to feel in control, we like to feel that we're up to the challenge, and we like to feel connected to things and people. And games, it, good design is very good at providing that. I, I've met a lot of fantastic people, I suppose, through just enjoying games and, and just thinking through games and enjoying the practice of, of I, I guess, pondering. Um, I mean, of course, one of my favorite people is Andrew Trevelyan, who you guys know very well, an extraordinary designer of games. Um, people like Daniel Golding, who works here as well. Um, very fresh, keen mind um, around games and music, in fact, is kind of his real, um, Thing at the moment, which is fascinating. Um, you know, I've met I've met lifelong heroes of the industry, like uh, Tim Schafer read my thesis that I wrote um, on him. Uh, Chris Avalone, who uh, was the creative director at Obsidian Entertainment for many years, many of my favourite RPGs like Planescape Torment and so on. I've become good friends with him. Um, God, yeah, just a lot of uh, people at PAX. You know, so many people at PAX I've met. So many kind of um, industry heroes of mine I've met at PAX and, and of course this probably doesn't get said but I love meeting students. I love meeting new, young, interesting minds that have a, a raw talent but don't know what it is or how, mm. to, how to focus it or where it should go um, and I love helping cultivate that and bring it into being and oh, yeah. you know, lead people along so I love meeting my students. I want to stay at Swinburne, I think, well, I, I at least want to stay at university. Mm. Um, who knows what will happen with Swinburne, I, I hope to stay here. Um, you know, I, I love my students, you know, I do. Um, it's a very interesting mix, I don't think I've, I have students like this in any other university. Um, it's a very different mix of people that come to Swinburne, which I enjoy. Um, very raw talent. Um, you might get people at other universities who are better at being a student, mm. um, which is about you know being disciplined, studying, and mm. so on. But their skills anyone can learn. What I love is finding people with raw talent who might not have been the best student, but they have talent and they have creativity. Mm. 
and I love molding that and shaping that into something really fantastic. I, yeah, I guess it really does depend on the age, but I would say always, of course, you need to be an historian of your medium. So play all of the games you can in various mediums and don't just play them, but reflect upon them and critique them. Mm. Play a game from board to pervasive to digital to physical sports. Mm. Play as many games as possible. Become an historian of that medium and reflect on what you loved about that experience. Mm. Reflect on how, and any design is, you've got what the designer wants to give you as an experience, and then you've got what the user experiences. And in between that whole line of communication is your design. Mm. And what any great designer can do is remove as much white noise as possible from A to B, mm. so that the experience you intend is the experience the person has at the end. And bad design keeps adding stuff in the middle, keeps throwing more stuff in so that the experience you intend gets fuzzy mm. and it's not clear and people take different things away from it. What any great design does is goes fr straight from here, straight to here, and you walk away with exactly the experience you as a designer wanted to give. And to do that, you need to play a hell of a lot of games, mm. you need to reflect on a hell of a lot of games, and you need to be critical in how did that designer give me that experience? You know, and really reflect on that. How was that achieved? Because that's what you have to learn and do. So yeah, I'd say play games, learn from them. Don't just play them, learn.